or rather is our sign language interpreter. A government spokesman, Isaac Mwara, has denied claims that the Ruto administration is frustrating former president Uhuru Kenyatta through budgetary cuts and delays that have triple, crippled his operations. Mwara, in a statement, has reiterated that the government remains committed to uphold the rule of law. Mwara's response comes in the wake of a detailed statement from Kenyatta's office that painted a picture of a Ruto administration that is out to deny Kenyatta his retirement benefits. NTV's Sydney Chazima starts us off. Former President Uhuru Kenyatta has now taken the fight over his constitutionally provided for retirement benefits at Ruto's doorstep. Through his director of communication, Kanze Dena, Kenyatta claims that he has received nothing from the 2023-2024 budgetary allocation of 503 million shillings. The year is ending without the office having any access to this allocation. Equally, Kenyatta claims that from the 2022-2023 budgetary allocation of 655 million shillings, only 28 million shillings reached his account. To this end, Kenyatta wants to be consulted on matters budgetary allocation. We would also like to distance ourselves from budget estimates tabled in parliament. Our position is that we had no input. But in response to this, government spokesman Isaac Maura claims that yeah. State House Comptroller who is the accounting officer for State House, is under no obligation to seek concurrence with Kenyatta. Dena claims that Kenyatta has been forced to foot his own bills. The lack of access to our rightful budget allocation has forced the former president, Uhuru Kenyatta, to run the office from his pocket, paying for all the bills the office incurs. Other than the budgetary allocations, Former President Uhuru Kenyatta is also finding fault in government's reluctance to furnish and pay for his office. Constitutionally, government is mandated to furnish, equip and maintain a suitable office space not exceeding 1,000 square meters. To this end, Kenyatta chose the Caledonia office, but government says the office sits on his personal property, hence a conflict of interest. There's an office complex in Nyari and President Uhuru Kenyatta can use that office as and when he deems uh, fit. That issue was raised um, with one of the former retire or one of the beneficiaries, I'm just not able to name who it is right now, but it was, complete, it was concluded by the AG then that it's not a conflict of interest, and that's why the former president made the decision to have the offices here. Kenyatta also claims yes. that his right to a new fleet of vehicles and a fuel allowance of 200,000 Kenya shillings has also been violated. The fewer cards were given, however, they were cancelled and blocked by State House since March 2023. His employees have also been targeted. The office still awaits the confirmation and communication on why they blatantly refuse to renew contracts of two professional staff members. The administrator, Mr. George Karioki, and Mrs. Kanze Dena Mararo, who is the director of communication. There's also the issue of unceremonious withdrawal and intimidation of staff via phone calls at midnight. There are several ways detailing how a retired head of state can forfeit his retirement benefits. This is according to the Retirement Benefits Act of 2003. The former president is yet to resign as the leader of the Jubilee Party. But that withstanding, Kenyatta's presence on the country's political sphere has been low-key of late. Could this just be the government on a revenge mission? Power is transient. And the people of Kenya will overcome. We will not submit to your threats and blackmail. We will not bow to you. We will not worship you. We worship the living God in heaven. We worship no human being. And our worry as an office is a precedence that is being set by the government of the day. Their decision to blatantly ignore execution of the Presidential Act No. 11 of 2023 seems to open up a Pandora's box that will leave a retired head of state at the mercy of the government of the day. The government maintains that it will uphold the rule of law always. Sydney Chazima, NTV. Elsewhere, thousands of junior secondary 